Hello friends and family and welcome to Diary of a Manic. Today's topic is Seasonal Affective Disorder, otherwise known as SAD or SAD if you would like. It's a mood disorder linked to seasonal changes, which you can probably guess from it being called Seasonal Affective Disorder. It's been argued that it's an evolved adaptation in humans that is a variant or remnant of hibernation response in some remote ancestors. Food may have been scarce somewhere in history, so the tendency to lower mood was a necessity to reduce caloric intake. Seasonal mood variations are also thought to be related to light cloud cover and is thought to or cloud cover is thought to contribute to the negative effects of SAD. Um, as far as <clears throat> the uh, the hibernation response, that is pretty much what you would think of with bears or something. Like they sleep through the winter and then they wake up in the spring. That's partially what humans did. Like we would just be dopey for <laughs> six months out of the year so we so we could reduce our uh, caloric intake and just just reduce everything we did. So SAD is measurably present at latitudes in the Arctic region such as northern Finland where the rate of SAD is 9.5%. The symptoms of SAD mimic those of major depressive disorder. There is potential risk of suicide in some individuals in, in experience SAD. At times, individuals may not feel depressed, but rather a lack of energy to perform everyday activities. Various causes of SAD have been studied, such as lack of serotonin and serotonin polymorphisms. Another theory is that SAD may be related to melatonin, which is produced in dim light and darkness from the pineal gland. Melatonin secretion is controlled by the endogenous circadian clock, but can also be suppressed by bright light. The circadian clock is often thrown off by lack of sunlight in the winter months. Um, SAD is actually quite measurable in uh, the Arctic regions such as Northwest Territories even for us here in Canada. I have, a, I have, I have family in the Northwest Territories actually and they're in Inuvik so that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty damn north. And um, there is <clears throat> quite a high suicide rate in a, lot of, in a lot of towns up there just because there's no sunlight for months at a time and yeah even my dad he's on the ice road right now and he uh like he he says there's like four to six hours of sunlight a day and that that just seems crazy like we whine here for <laughs> having like well i guess it's not that bad right now because the sun's already risen above the horizon and it's 9:30. But it, it, yeah, it was risen above the horizon at like 8.30 when I got up actually, but still, like it's, it, we have pretty short days occasionally, like the sun rising at 10 and going down at 4 and like that just seems like a way too short of a day. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's quite, it's quite a bit worse in more Arctic regions. Uh, more symptoms of SAD are directly relatable to symptoms of depression, such as tendency to oversleep, lack of energy, difficulty concentrating, withdrawal from family, fr friends and family, sorry. Though so the symptoms are relatable to the symptoms of depression, the symptoms actually lead to depression rather than stem from them. People who experience spring and summer depression often show classic signs of depression, such as anxiety, irritability, and decreased appetite. Seasonal affective disorder is referred to is not referred to as a separate disorder. Sorry, it is often applied as an added description to major depressive disorder. <coughs> Excuse me, 
added to added description of major depressive episodes in individuals with depressive order or bipolar disorder. The seasonal pattern specifier must meet four criteria. Depressive episodes at a certain time of year, or emissions or mania at a characteristic time of year. These patterns must have lasted two years with no non-seasonal major depressive episodes, and these seasonal depressive episodes outnumber other depressive episodes in the individual's lifetime. There are many factors that may increase your risk of SAD. Being a female is actually a risk. Uh, SAD is diagnosed more often in women than in me women than men. Sorry, <laughs> but men have more may have more severe symptoms. Age is the second factor. Young people have a higher risk of winter SAD. Family history is the third factor. People with SAD may be more likely to have blood relatives with SAD or another form of depression. Excuse me. Having clinical depression or bipolar disorder is the fourth factor and probably the biggest risk factor. Excuse me. Symptoms of depression may worsen seasonally if you have one of these conditions. Living far from the equator is the last of the big risk factors. SAD appears to be more common among people who live far north or south of the equator. This is due to decreased sunlight in the fall and winter months. If you think you have seasonal affective disorder, you should talk to a doctor. Prior to your appointment, you should make a list of your symptoms, such as feeling down or having a lack of energy, any major, major stressors or life changes you've dealt with recently. Your depression patterns such as when it begins and when it's at its worst and any mental or physical problems you may have that may affect your mood. Most of all, if you're having any issues with depression or other disorders, you should al always be 100% honest with your doctor. I cannot stress that enough. You don't, you don't have to get extremely personal if you're uncomfortable with it, but let them know what the problem is and don't leave anything important out. That, yeah, that's, uh, that's the same with uh, most depressive disorders or most mental illnesses anyways. Um, if you're, if you're uh, <clears throat> going to go to your doctor to talk about it, uh, list out your symptoms and always, always, always be honest with your doctor. Don't just go to your doctor to get like antidepressants or something because I don't, I don't believe they make you high. <laughs> uh, one treatment that differs specifically from, mo from most treatments for depression is light therapy. Light therapy, also called phototherapy, is when you sit a few feet from a special light therapy box that, that exposes you to bright light. Light therapy mimics natural outdoor light and appears to cause a change in brain chemicals linked to mood. It also holds off melatonin production and is supposed to give you more energy for the day. Light therapy is one of the first line treatments for fall onset SAD. It typically takes a few days to two weeks to start working. Research on light therapy is limited, but it appears to be mo effective for most people in, in relieving SAD symptoms. You can actually purchase a light box for yourself, but it's suggested that you talk to your doctor to find if that's even relevant to you or just to find the best one for you. Your doctor may recommend starting antidepressants before your symptoms typically begin e each year. This, they may also recommend that you continue the use of antidepressants beyond the time your symptoms usually go away as a safeguard. It may take a few weeks to a month to kick in. That's why your doctor may start you a little early. As well, you may have... <clears throat> Sorry, as well as you may have to try a few different medications but to find the one that works best for you. Regular exercise is a good home remedy for SAD or other forms of depression. Another great home remedy is to make your home, your home environment sunnier and brighter. 
You can do this by opening blinds, trimming tree branches around your windows, or adding sunlights to your home. The last and the last and probably best home remedy for SAD is to just get outside. Just go for a walk or sit on a bench. Even on colder, cloudy days, being outside in sunlight will help. Especially if you spend time outside within two hours of getting up in the morning. That'll give you increased energy for the rest of the day and it'll hold off your melatonin production so you're not still producing melatonin in the morning. So that's, uh, that's this episode. That was a Seasonal Affective Disorder, also known as SAD or SAD. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have any suggestions for further videos, then let me know in the comments section below. Um, I'm currently doing research on probably 10 or 12 <laughs> subjects, actually. Um, Asperger's gender roles, learning disabilities, narcissism, uh, psychology of terrorism, social anxiety disorder, social inhibition, Napoleon complex, Tourette's syndrome, multiple personality disorder. So there's going to be uh, quite a few more episodes coming out in the next couple weeks and I hope you enjoy them very much. And last but not least guys, have a great day.